Good evening. The board now reconvenes this meeting of the Plano ISD Board of Trustees in open session at 7 18 p.m. on March 6, 2018 at the Plano ISD Administration Building. Thank you for your patience as we worked our way downstairs. And we appreciate that you're here today, especially on Election Day. I know it took a lot for you to, to, to be here. So thank you. My name is Missy Bender, and I'm president of the Plano ISD Board of Trustees. And on the board's behalf, I wish to extend a warm welcome to all who are present and to our web and video viewers. We will conduct our meeting focusing on the district's two major goals. Number one, ensure the continued improvement in student learning. And number two, ensure the efficient use of resources. Let me start by introducing my fellow trustees and staff. Seated to my left are Sarah Bonzer, our, our lone finalist for Superintendent of Plano ISD. <laughs> we, we took that action this morning in a special called meeting. And beside her, we have Nancy Humphrey, our board secretary, Trustee Tammy Richards, <laughs> and Trustee Jerry Chambers. And seated to my right, our board vice president, David Stolley, Trustee Dr. Yoram Solomon, and Trustee Angela Powell, and executive assistant to superintendent and board of trustees, Denise Gillespie. At this time, we're, we have a moment for an inspirational message and the Pledge of Allegiance. Board Secretary Nancy Humphrey will Get offer uh, just a brief inspirational message. <laughs> On the fly, <laughs> I apologize. I, I was reminded and I came unprepared, my mistake. Uh, but I will say we had such a wonderful announcement this morning and I love that we are looking forward to a bright future for Plano ISD and we are a mission-driven group, and we have stability in the district, and I am thankful for that. And I'm excited as well to hear from all of these wonderful students this evening. So I want to ex express this inspiration for a great future in Plano ISD. Thank you, Nancy. The board welcomes our student greeters this evening. These students are grand prize winners at the elementary regional science and the district secondary science fairs. Students, please come on up to the front of the room at this time, and Board Vice President David Stolley will present you with some special certificates. <coughs> oh yeah, okay. Students, would you take a moment and use the microphone, tell us your name, where you go to school, what grade you're in, and tell us what the name of your science project is. My name is Anushka Shreether. I go to Auto Middle School. I'm in sixth grade, and the name of my science fair project was Zoom to Flash. My name is Anish Mustiala, and my school is College Elementary. My, I'm in second grade, and my science fair project is Super Power Sandcastle. My name is Harshal Paratia. I'm an eighth grader at Wilson Middle School, and the name of my project is Intellitherm. So cool, it's hot. <laughs> my name is Pranav Sivi. I go to Jasper High School, and my project was Conquering Concrete. My name is Noah Mathai, and I am Pranav Sivi's partner, and my project title was also Conquering Concrete. Well, I want to draw your attention, audience members, to the projects that these students brought with them. They're over here on the side of the room. And before you leave, maybe you'll take a minute to admire the extremely wonderful award-winning work of these students. So board members, uh, well, David, do you want to go ahead? Do you have certificates to present to them? Why don't we go ahead and do that? And after we do that, then board members, you can make a few comments. <coughs> You can move around. Congratulations. 
students, don't leave yet because you're going to hear from a few board members who are going to address you. So any comments from the board? I think you've done a very amazing job because I know that science fair projects take at least three months or more. So congratulations, you did an excellent job. I also want to congratulate your support staff, your parents, because I know it takes the whole family to do a lot of these projects. So I wanted to add that, um, you know, my daughter, my older daughter, she's now in college, but she, when she was in middle school, she won a grand prize in science fair. And one of the things that I learned is that this science fair would give you scientific knowledge. It would give you challenges. It would cause you to be curious and find answers to questions. Remember that, do that all your lives. Students, I just want to thank you for coming tonight and, and bringing your projects so we can all see the hard work that you've done and it's amazing how much you learn when you do something like that I'm sure and so thanks for representing Plano ISD so well and parents thanks for your support because we know science fair is a family endeavor right. <laughs> thanks so, so much on that note <laughs> on, on that note family members and teachers who are here to support these students, please stand so we can applaud your efforts. Thank you for being here. I know it's school and it's, it's a busy night. Debbie, do you need any more pictures? moms and dads I'm sure this will go on the website so <laughs> okay thank you students please take your seats we have lots of students with us and lots of recognitions to do this evening so this is super wonderful to help us remember why we're here it's for our students and their achievement so with us tonight to lead the Pledge of Allegiance are theater students from Frankfurt and Renner Middle Schools. These two student theater groups are first place winners at the recent one act play competition. And we also have a soloist from Vines High School who will sing the national anthem after the pledge. So students, please join us at the front of the room. Let's ask everyone to please stand for the pledge and students begin when you're ready. to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So leading us in the national anthem will be... Okay, all right, sorry, that wasn't sure who it was or where they were. So please begin when you're ready. here is two F-18s flying overhead. 
Okay, that was wow. I know. That was amazing. So so let me share. Students, stay right here for a minute so we can get pictures and family, teachers, and so forth. Feel free to move about and get pictures that you want. And I'm going to read a few more words here. I understand that these theater students, and I think you're uh, before us, and also stand, okay, stand up. Let me see you again. You have also won individual awards at the One Act Play Competition. Students, would you please introduce yourselves and state your name, school, grade, and award. Is that everybody? That's one, just these here. Okay, so we're being supported by the students in the audience. Okay, so up here, tell us your name, your school, your grade, and what you want. Hi, my name is Emily. I go to Renner Middle School. I'm in eighth grade and I won Best Actress. Hi, my name is Noah Kogan. I go to Renner Middle School and I won Best Actor. Eighth grade. Hi, my name is Max Mays. I go to Frankfurt. Um, I'm in eighth grade too, and I also won Best Actor. Wow. I'm Emily also. <laughs> I, I go to Vines High School. I'm a freshman, and I made the TMEA All-State Choir. Wow. Board members, do you want to make a few comments to all of these kids who participated in this? wonderful experience. So I am uh, fully accept expecting that Shepton uh, one act next year. Uh, <laughs> extraordinarily strong. Uh, but uh, just to, uh, I was a, I was in fine arts in high school. I did one act. I loved it. I thought it was one of the most rewarding experiences of, of my life. And uh, just out of curiosity, because fine arts is such a big component of our district, how many of those of us on the board participated in something in fine arts. I mean, there was, I know we've got band, we've got all of us. So congratulations, I'm so happy for y'all, proud of y'all, but also continue with this because it's an amazing adventure that you're on currently that can lead to a lifetime of love of the theater or of singing or, or all kinds of things that y'all are doing. I would like to say that if you become famous, please thank Plano ISD for this. <laughs> And if you don't say you're from Frisco. <laughs> yeah. Thanks so much for sharing your talents with us, and we can't wait to see what comes next for all of y'all and Emily. Wow, that was amazing. That's wow. amazing. Thank you so much. For a freshman? I know. Oh my gosh. Thanks. I sang when I was your age. My daughter went through the whole program at Plano West. You have an incredibly powerful voice. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Congratulations to all of you. Continue pursuing your passion. That's the beauty of Plano ISD. You can do that. So students, thank you. And you are, let's take a minute and recognize you have family members, teachers here that are joining you. If you do, please stand. Teachers, family. We know it's a very busy time of year. We thank each of you for taking the time to be with us this evening and share your talents. And you are free to leave. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Emily. We will now move on to the recognition part of the agenda. Uh, Ms. Oliver, our Assistant Superintendent for Government, Community, and Planning Initiatives, is made aware of student guests prior to the meeting. Ms. Oliver, do we have any? I, I do have a list. Just okay. Moment, please. Wait. I'll wait. Oh, wait. We have we have two student groups. <laughs> we have two student groups this evening. One, we have Girl Scout Troop Seven Nine Two Three. And we also have Boy Scout Troop 380. Okay, Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts, if you're here, can you wave to us? Stand up, wave to us. Thank you for being I don't know here. If they heard you. There they are. There they are. We appreciate you being here. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Miss Oliver. Yes, thank you. The board is proud to recognize the many students who are achieving at the state, national, and international levels. Tonight we are honoring, via PowerPoint presentation, the following 
Recognitions. The Plano ISD Youth Art Month 2018 winners, six student artworks were selected for exhibition in March at the State Capitol. Capital City Extemporaneous Speaking Round Robin winners. The top 16 extemporaneous speakers in the state were invited to compete at this competition and three Plano West students placed in the top four taking first, second, and fourth places. And Harvard National High School Invitational Forensics Tournament winners where Plano West placed first in extemporaneous speaking and public forum debate. Plano Senior High placed third in congressional debate. Clark High School won first place sweepstakes among schools competing for the first time at this tournament. That concludes our student recognitions this evening. And now we will turn our attention to some staff recognition. Dr. Kerry Cooper, Assistant Superintendent for District Services, will introduce two very special staff recognitions. And Board Vice President David Stolle will present board certificates, Dr. Cooper. Thank you, President Bender. Also, would like to ask our uh, Executive Director of Safety and Security, Mr. Joe Parks, to come up and assist. And he'll give a little bit more detail, but this is some uh, very much deserved recognition for one of our bus drivers and bus assistants. As you recall, we had a pretty significant um, incident a month or so ago, and I think it made the several of the news broadcast and the helicopters and the whole the whole thing and we are proud of the actions of our staff and Joe's going to walk us through some information and then uh, give some very much deserved recognition for them. Mr. Thank, you, Dr. Thank you Dr. Cooper, uh, President Bender, Superintendent Bonzer, members of the board and members of the cabinet, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, back on Jan January 19th uh, there was an announcement uh, made over our text service about a major bus accident that had occurred at the intersection of Spring Creek Parkway and US 75. Uh, a number of district components including transportation, risk management, safety and security responded as well as police and uh, EMS. Uh, when we did the initial uh, investigation uh, and, and arrived on the scene we uh, were told that a, a male uh, driver of a full-size pickup who was fleeing from the Allen Police Department uh, had struck one of our buses uh, broadside right in the door. Uh, as part of the district's investigation into the incident, uh, we of course reviewed the bus video and as the security director for the last seven and a half years I've reviewed a lot of video and I will tell you this is some of the most dramatic I've seen uh, in my years here. Uh, this was an incredibly violent impact. Uh, we had a bus driver, uh, Robert Krauss, and the assistant, Jay Pachel, uh, riding in the bus, as well as one elementary school student. Uh, Ms. Pachel was actually uh, thrown out of her seat and onto the floor of the bus. Uh, the student, thankfully, was in a harness and was uh, jostled a little bit, but was not injured. Uh, the driver, Mr. Kraus, the, violent, uh, the impact was so violent that his hands were knocked off the steering wheel of the bus. He was knocked out of uh, driving position even though he was secured with a seat belt because the, the truck struck the bus literally broadside after the truck ran the red light. Uh, reviewing the video, uh, uh, Ms. Pachel, before the bus came to a complete stop, was already back on her feet. Uh, and got into a kneeling position to care for the student who was on the bus. Uh, Mr. Uh, Krause uh, was able to regain control of the bus and get on the brakes uh, and take control of the bus, which probably um, was able to slow the bus to where the impact was not as great as it could have been. Uh, once the bus came to a stop uh, by actually hit hitting a tree on the other side of Spring Creek, uh, Ms. Pachel, uh, after checking on the student uh, and seeing he was okay, immediately turned her attention to Mr. Krause and walked up to uh, uh, try to care for him and make sure he was okay. Thankfully, both employees were not injured, but uh, their, their actions clearly demonstrated uh, excellent work under extreme pressure, under trying circumstances, and uh, they demonstrated absolute professionalism and attention to duty. Uh, in this incident and we're happy to uh, recommend their uh, receiving a, an award and recognition from the school board. 
Well, I think on, on behalf of the board, I just want to say that, um, you know, our mission is children first. And in times of crisis is when character is revealed. And so the actions that you all took uh, in that in that moment of crisis, first check on your student and then care for each other um, to then make sure that the, the situation was secure and safe um, in a time like that speaks volumes of your character. And we're proud of you all, proud to have you all with us on the team. And so if I could, if y'all would like to come up, I'd like to present these certificates. pleasure to recognize and commend Mr. Krause and Ms. Punchall for their exceptional professionalism. If you have any friends or family that have joined you here tonight, please feel free to stand or other employees who work with you. Uh, we want to recognize all of them. Let's take a moment and uh, thank you for staying. Very good. We have lots of support. Sometimes we need to take a moment and recognize those who go above and beyond, and this is one of those times. Thank you so much for putting our kids first and taking care of them. We are proud to have you in this district, and we honor you. So thanks so much for being here tonight, and thanks for all that you do. turn our attention to a fine arts recognition. Dr. Katrina Hasley, Assistant Superintendent for Academic Services, will introduce the rec recognition of our fine arts department. Dr. Hasley. We have Kathy Cuttis here, our Director of Fine Arts, here to introduce the recognitions for this evening. Good evening. Thank you for this opportunity to kick off Youth Art Month, Music in Our Schools, and Theater in Our Schools Month with this recognition. We regret that we couldn't provide you with our typical pre-meeting performances in the lobby tonight due to the primary election <laughs> voting going on out there, um, but because this recognition is really about the work our teachers and students do. Um, I do want to just echo your thanks to Emily Kondrat from Vines High School and to our One Act Play cast members from Frankfurt and Renner for joining us tonight. The themes of these national recognition programs for 2018 are all about connections and building community. In that spirit, I'd like to share a few of the connections fine arts students and programs are making in Plano ISD. The art department began the year with a collaborative installation of folded paper fortune tellers inspired by the district theme, Unfold Your Future. The art teachers created a giant crane from hundreds of individual fortune tellers to hang in the lobby just beyond the boardroom where we are tonight as a testament to what is possible when creative people work together. A number of joint performances of school and community ensembles have taken place this year as well. The Plano West Choral Department, pictured here, collaborated with the Dallas Symphony Orchestra and the British Vocal Ensemble Voces 8 to present concerts this fall. The Macmillan High School Choir also joined the Plano Civic Chorus for their December performance. Our community reached out to support students in some very tangible ways. The Plano Symphony Orchestra, the Plano Men of Note, and the St. Andrews United Methodist Church Choir 
have all provided scholarships that are allowing 20 middle school students who would not otherwise have been able to afford them to take private lessons for the school year. The Plano Community Band is continuing their Music for Life program by conducting sectionals and a side-by-side -side concert with the Schimmelfinnig and Wilson bands. Their directors will be conducting one of their UIL pieces with the community band and the students will be the special invited guests at their April concert. <clears throat> District efforts to co connect and build community have also been recognized. Matt and Laura Grunler were recognized by the Texas Art Educators Association with the Lone Star Art Advocate Award in November for creating an online community for art teachers with their weekly K-12 art chat on Twitter. I'm also proud to report that our department was recognized by the Art Center of Plano as the Arts and Education Award recipient at their annual For the Love of Art event in November. Our central office staff accepted the award on behalf of all of our creative teachers and students. Fine arts education also helps students to connect their own unique forms of learning and understanding. Stanford professor Elliot Eisner in his book, The Art and Creation of Mind, suggests that arts teach children to make good judgments about qualitative relationships that the arts teach children that problems can have more than one solution and that questions can have more than one answer. The arts also celebrate multiple perspectives. The arts teach children that in complex forms of problem solving, purposes are seldom fixed, but change with circumstance and opportunity. The arts make vivid the fact that neither words in their literal form nor numbers exhaust what we can know. The limits of our language does not define the limits <coughs> of our cognition. The arts teach students that small differences can make large effects, and that the arts help children learn to say what cannot be said. And perhaps most powerfully, Dr. Eisner says that the arts position in the school curriculum symbolizes to the young what adults believe is important. We're so fortunate to have a group of district leaders who have placed arts education amongst their priorities here in Plano ISD inside the curriculum as a powerful model for our students. It's an extremely busy time of year in the fine arts world, so many of our students and staff were unable to be here tonight. I know they are here in spirit. I'd like to ask any of the fine arts teachers who are still left in the audience, I think they've all gone, <laughs> um, to stand and just let us thank them and recognize their hard work. I'd like to share just some highlights from the year to date in our fine arts programs. The enrollment figures are, that are found in your Bragg book represent three out of every four secondary students enrolled in a fine arts course. Many more participate strictly in the extracurricular components of these programs. Students have applied their learning to a wide variety of activities this year. Here are just a few highlights because we don't have that much time. <laughs> Rice Middle School Tenor Bass Choir, the Robinson Middle School Treble Choir, the Rice Middle School String Orchestra, and the Plano West Senior High Full Orchestra all received invitations to perform at the Texas Music Educators Association Convention last month. Earlier in the year, the Plano West, sorry, the Plano Senior High Chamber Orchestra performed at the Midwest International Band and Orchestra Clinic in Chicago and the Plano West Jazz Band performed as part of the Jazz Education Network Conference in Dallas. Three music ensembles were named commended winners and seven more were named national winners in the Mark of Excellence Awards. Plano Musical Theater Productions garnered six individual and six group nominations seven individual and five group honorable mentions at the 2017 Dallas Summer Musicals High School Musical, Musical Awards, the local high school equivalent of the Tonys. 
Plano East production of In the Heights walked away with the top honors in the best ensemble or chorus and the best choreography categories. Speech teams from Clark, Jasper, and Plano West earned spots in the International Public Policy Forum Top 64. Plano West continued on to the Top 32. This past weekend, 105 Plano ISD high school speech <coughs> students participated in the Texas Forensic League State Tournament, where only about 7% of the qualifiers survived to the final round of this event. We had 12 finalists who brought home two first place, one second, one third, and one fourth place, and five additional top 10 finishes. The regional level visual arts scholastic event that took place recently included almost 2,300 pieces of student artwork. Only 162 pieces were selected to advance to the state level and of those, 67, a full 41%, were the work of Plano ISD art students. 40% of the pieces being recognized tonight at the Dallas Museum of Art as part of the Young Masters exhibition were the work of our Plano students, and Laura Grundler is there representing our department this evening. Those works included pieces of studio art, art history research, and music theory compositions. A total of 80 incredible musicians survived the multi-level audition process to earn a position in one of the Texas all-state music ensembles that came together at the recent Texas Music Educators Association Conference in San Antonio. Plano represented a full 7% of these musicians from across the state. Of course, these students achieve, at least in part, because of the inspirational and creative teaching they receive every day. Five fine arts teachers are among this year's Teacher of the Year nominees. McMillan Speech and Debate Coach Robert Shepard is the 2017 National Speech and Debate Association Teacher of the Year. Plano West Speech and Debate Coach Rhonda Smith was inducted into the Texas Forensic Association Hall of Fame. And Plano ISD Art Coordinator Laura Grundler was named the Outstanding Visual Arts Administrator by the Texas Art, Art Education Association. The arts leaders of Plano ISD are contributing to their time and energy to their profession at large as well. Hightower Music Specialist Brenda Keene is currently the Southern Division President for the Organization of American Kodai Educators. Brinker Music Specialist Kristen Moore is serving as the President of the Kodai Educators of Texas, and Theater and Speech Coordinator Greg Arp served as the Texas Educational Theater Association Director of Programming for their fall conference. My final update <coughs> that I have for you tonight is simply to report that we are on schedule to finalize the plans for the Fine Arts Center at the end of this month so that the bidding process can begin soon. We are anticipating a groundbreaking at the Alma Drive site in September and hope that each one of you will join us to initiate the physical building process. We're extremely proud of our many talented and creative students, their dedicated teachers, and the inspirational leadership from our centralized department. We are grateful to you, our district leaders, for your continued commitment to a varied and balanced education that includes a fine arts experience that connects to their learning and builds a sense of community on the campus and beyond. We are most fortunate to be doing this work with such strong district support and community connections. And I thank you so much for your time this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Board members, do you have any comments that you wanna share? Yes. I, I have one um, you know back in the importance of art back in 1966 was the first episode of Star Trek I don't know how many of you watched Star Trek and in there kids well not kids in that case it wasn't kids but uh, they gave their creativity freedom and uh, one of the things that you see there or several things you see there that's where you see the first cell phone that's where you see the first 
Bluetooth headset, things that were invented decades afterwards. So when you use art, when you develop art, that creativity, it opens your mind to things. And so uh, there's, there's nothing like it. I just want to add that uh, my Kathy and I visited a little before the meeting. Um, the Chambers family has been very involved in the arts in Plano and have greatly, greatly benefited from not only the music, but the leadership. And so I'm very grateful for everyone for their time and commitment to the arts in Plano. Thank you. One of the things that I value so much about Plano ISD, it includes fine arts and all of the other opportunities, the electives that we offer, is that there's some place for everyone to belong. They don't have to be the all state this or that, but they can be a participant and they can learn and enjoy and feel connected to something. I, th I think that's really special. And uh, you know, this area is, is one of those that is also very important to my family. Um, so thank you to all the teachers who are here who give um, and, and thank you for your leadership. Ms. Cuddis, I just want to thank you and your fine arts team, teachers and administrators throughout the district for all that you do, because we have a world-class fine arts program, and, and others look to your leadership and, and our programs as the model. And so for all that you do for students, um, thank you so much. And um, I know that we all feel like the arts are a part of a well-rounded education. And my goal would continue to be to make sure that all students have the opportunity to participate. And we've had that conversation. We and uh, just knowing how important we think that is for all students uh, to be in the fine arts. A quick question. Yes. Kathy, do yes, we sir. still do the uh, uh, fifth grade uh, concert day? Uh, the fourth yeah. grade concert day fourth of the day? symphony mm -hmm. is fourth. coming up the week after spring break. Right. Okay. So we're, you we're, know. We're gearing up. We're anticipating you cannot that. force anyone to take art or music, but when you take them to that concert, that's that's where you. Hook it's them. extra special. Yes. Absolutely, we're looking forward to it very much. Hey, thank you, Kathy. Thank you. Um, do we need a photo or anything? It's in my script. We're good. All right. Thank you. All right. Now we will introduce the public comment session uh, of our. Agenda for the public comment portion of our agenda the board has public comment cards that are accepted from 6 to 7 p.m Cards are not accepted after 7 p.m. And are not transferable to other parties or speakers all cards were collected and given to Carla Oliver or a representative of the communications department Who will present the speakers during this time miss Oliver? Do we have any speakers for public comment? We do we have four, but they are all non agenda, okay? so um, I will go ahead and read the language now related to the comments that will come at a later point in time. So these are sort of the parameters of for the four speakers to, to uh, understand how this process will work. Pursuant to board policies BED legal, BED local, and BED exhibit, the board may place reasonable restraints on the number, length, and frequency of presentations so long as it does not unfairly discriminate among speakers based upon their viewpoint. The board is not authorized to discuss or act on the public's comments or complaints if the subject is not on the agenda. So that's going to be the case here. We have four comments at the end of the meeting not on the agenda. If a member of the public or the board inquires about a subject for which notice has not been given, the board may only make a statement of specific factual information, recite existing policy in response to the inquiry, or refer the person to a staff member for more information or assistance. If the subject of the public comment is already on the agenda for the meeting, the board may invite the speaker to stay until the board reaches that topic on the agenda. 30 minutes in total have been allotted to hear persons who desire to make comments to the board. Persons who wish to participate in this portion of the meeting shall complete the appropriate public comment form before the meeting begins and indicate the topic about which they wish to speak. No presentation shall exceed three minutes. If you are not finished uh, at the end of three minutes, I will interrupt you so that we can move to the next person. Delegations of more than five persons shall appoint one to present their views before the board. Finally, pursuant to Texas Government Code sections 551.074 and 551.0821, the board will not permit the presentation of personally identifiable information regarding a student and will not discuss the appointment, employment, evaluation, reassignment, duties, discipline, or dismissal of a public officer or employee or to hear a complaint or charge against an officer or employee subject to Texas Government Code Section 
Should a speaker wish to address one of these issues, they must do so through the appropriate local grievance policies, FNG local, DGBA local, or GF local. Okay. So we will call those forward at the conclusion of the meeting. We'll now address the consent agenda, which includes personnel recommendations, minutes of previous meetings, bids, purchases, and construction items. Are there any requests to remove an item or items from the consent agenda for further discussion? Hearing none. That's where you're looking at me. I'm looking around. <laughs> Hearing none, uh, do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented? So moved. Do I have a second? I second. All in favor, please raise your hand. Motion passes unanimously. All right, we have a few reports on our agenda tonight for information only. The first is related to student achievement where we will receive an update on the support that is being offered to focus campuses. Assistant Superintendent for Academic Services, Dr. Katrina Hasley will introduce the report on student achievement. Dr. Hasley. Thank you. Lori Taylor, our Executive Director for Elementary Academic Services, will present an update to you on the excellent support our team has been providing for our focus campuses. We wanted to take a few minutes to highlight uh, the work of the team, and she's speaking on behalf of elementary and secondary coordinators, directors, and specialists. Thank you, Dr. Hasley. Good evening. Thank you, President Bender, Board of Trustees, and our loan finalist for superintendent, Ms. Sponsor. <laughs> Um, for the opportunity to talk to you a little bit tonight about the um, support that we've been able to provide our focus campuses. Um, it truly has been an exceptional experience for us and we feel like we've been able to partner with them and uh, learn alongside them and learn with them and begin to shift some thinking about um, planning for teaching versus um, moving towards planning for learning. Um, we have a couple of slides in here. I think you're probably familiar with this. I know Dash's team um, has done a, a really great job uh, before tonight, kind of educating you on how the state identifies these campuses, but we provided a little information for you in case you needed that. Um, so just some things to remember, of course, these are title campuses that are identified. Um, they look at their achievement on reading and math on the state assessments and it's also based on selected student groups so that can vary by campus. Um, on the next slide it talks a little bit more in depth about the state's their their methodology in identifying these campuses. Ms. Taylor can you tell us just quickly which ones are the priority in the focus schools? The names of the campuses? Yes. Yes um, I can do that and I meant to write those down but I think I have them memorized. Um, we have Barron and Huffman. Yeah, no, they're focus. They're all focus. Barron, um, Huffman, and Foreman, Memorial, Meadows, McCall, Davis, Carpenters, our middle school. Am I missing one? Is that all of them? Those are all focused, their priority. Right, they're all focused. So the methodology behind uh, the identification, they compute the improvement required status and the percentage of missed safeguards in reading and math. Then they rank those campuses by number of years they have been improvement required or not. Uh, and they take the highest percentage of safeguards missed then that's how they arrive with 10% of the state's title campuses that meet that criteria. I know Dash is here, so if you guys have any further questions about that, he'll probably do a far better job than I will of answering the questions around that identification. So in staying true to our board goal of ensuring continued improvement in student learning, our support for these campuses and, and others, not just for focused campuses, um, has certainly aligned with improving teacher efficacy and collective efficacy, which we know has a high impact on student learning and achievement. I also wanted to talk a little bit about our PISD professional learning definition, which has recently just surfaced through some work that our professional learning commission has done. Um, so in looking at our definition of what we believe professional learning is all about, um, we've been able to what we've been able to provide is support really aligns with our belief that this process for our teachers and for us as well has been truly reflective in nature as we all continue to grow. 
It has certainly extended into practice with an end goal of positively impacting our students. It really has been learning together as we go. And uh, we know we have incredibly talented teachers. We've learned, I'll say this again, we've learned from them and we've, we've learned with them, which is what's made this experience really very collaborative and very reflective. So I'm gonna talk just a little bit about um, the process. Um, early on this year, we had the opportunity to partner with assessment accountability. Um, I know elementary and, and secondary, we, this was a part of our, our journey and uh, work with them to, um, a, through a comprehensive needs assessment. But be before I talk a little bit about that, I wanna talk about kind of our last year of support on campuses. Um, <coughs> various capacities, various types of support on campuses, we really began to notice that some teachers did need some um, additional, additional support with planning. Um, we noticed that there were various models of planning happening on campuses, and we also knew that through research, that research speaks to very specific components within that process as teachers, um, as teachers plan for learning. So, we know we're really blessed with a guaranteed and viable curriculum here in Plano and incredibly strong teachers, but we also know that confidence in planning for the delivery of that curriculum for students with varied strengths and needs is also critical. So we were able to partner with um, the assessment department and uh, do a comprehensive needs assessment with each of these campuses. Um, and what surfaced from the data um, with these campuses uh, was the need to really take a, a deeper look at what type of support they might need for planning. We knew that we'd be a part of supporting them through their campus improvement plan. That's what this was all about, taking a look at the data through that comprehensive needs assessment and then um, involving us in how, how we could best support them. So once we, we um, looked at the data and we realized what surfaced was they uh, really did need some assistance with planning based on what their problem statement was and the root causes that aligned with that, that's, that's when this began to grow and began to really take um, some legs to it. And um, we wanted to, with this work around planning, I think a need, we realized there was a need from pre-K through 12 to re really operationalize how we plan um, and how we assist our, our teachers with effective planning processes. So was there also sort of a companion diagram that talks about student services and will that be discussed more in our work session? Because I think that's also a critical component of student achievement, what happens kind of around them and outside their classroom. So will that work be forthcoming at the Mark work, uh, March work session? I thought that was part, I'm just assuming that's part of the staffing because I guess I'm assuming the staffing would cover those other support services. I, my point is it's more than just in the classroom that these children need assistance. Sure. So we've been very intentional about our plan. Um, our focus has been on the process and then the content, working backwards with our goals in mind, which is really about building teacher efficacy. And again, um, as I've mentioned before, operationalizing our planning processes. So we began to think, what does effective planning look like? And what does it sound like when our teacher teams are working together? And if you'll notice, kind of a starting point uh, when we began to put a, a planning protocol, so to speak, um, together, we took a look at what the standards were, which were in stage one of our planning documents, and, and, and teach teachers how to unpack those standards, which simply means we look at the verbs, which gives us kind of an idea of the cognitive demand of that standard. Um, the nouns, that's related to the what that they're learning, the qualifiers, when, how, to what extent, um, and then a vertical component as well. We want to take a look at what they're learning before they hit third grade or before they hit ninth grade or tenth grade, and what's, what's beyond that. So really taking a more global look at the planning. Uh, resource alignment's a big part of that. So we've, we've had strong conversations with teachers and we've heard strong conversations from teachers about um, how our resources can impact instruction. So we've worked side by side with them on making sure that they're choosing those appropriate resources to meet the needs of all of their students. And then we look at the progression of the learning in each unit. Um, again, taking more of a global look at that um, planning and the learning that's ahead of them versus a week by week planning. So I know that's something that our teams have been able to help facilitate um, with their, those teachers on their teams. The assessment part is a big part of that as well. Um, 
where within that progression of learning do we need to check for understanding, adjust my instruction as a teacher. So there's been a lot of learning around formative assessments and summative assessments and how to use that data to adjust instruction. So you might be wondering, well, how, does, how has all this happened? When does, when does it happen? There are really two parts to this. One is professional learning, and, and the other one is really support of that learning. So we've been able to um, get this in front of uh, grade level teams, obviously, through some after school training we've done or in-house in training that we've done, content teams as well in secondary, individual teachers, support, campus leadership, um, instructional specialist team leaders, it really has required collaborative teams to make this happen. So again, I'm so really, I'm so very proud of our campus leaders, of our teachers, our district support teams in this effort. It really has been a partnership. Our work, we feel like, is always around improving instruction in the classroom as well as guaranteeing a viable curriculum. And we know that a strong teacher that provides strong instruction is going to ha have an eye in high impact on student growth. So the learning has branched beyond the focus campuses, which has been really great. Um, once we provided some of this learning to our campus leaders, we've had lots of other requests for support in that area. Um, so we've been partnering with many campuses beyond the focus schools. And again, I, I can't state it enough, our goal is always to build teacher efficacy. And within this plan of support we've had, uh, we really have wanted to oper operationalize our planning processes. So. Um, and, and research certainly supports the power of teachers knowing, knowing their students first, what they need, their standards, and then of course how to effectively plan that powerful instruction. District coordinators and specialists have been supporting in a very similar manner. Um, and we're, see we're hearing and seeing some pretty powerful conversations among our teacher teams. It truly has been the result of thinking a little bit differently and beginning to change some practices. Um, the conversations, that, like I've said, have been very rich, full of questions, and very reflective. And I, 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 we really think that's been the result of creating some safe spaces with our teacher teams and establishing some relationships so that they can grow. These are just some examples of some of the quotes, recent quotes, quotes that um, we've heard from teachers. What is overteaching? Overteaching? Mm -hmm. Oh. Um, I think the overteaching comment was just about really truly knowing, uh, tr knowing your standards um, and not maybe going beyond or I think that's probably what that meant. Um, sometimes less is more approach. <coughs> So I think these are some things that we know for sure um, from the work that we've been doing with the campuses. These teacher teams are really constructing meaning together in a very safe place. And there really is an increased intentionality with the spirit of collaboration. That's been really great to see. Teacher behaviors and practices are beginning to change. And we are operationalizing effective planning for learning in our district. And we, we feel like that all of these intentional plans and outcomes, um, not just supported by research, but in what we've seen um, with the teacher teams we've been working with, it has a will have the opportunity to have a positive impact on instruction and a powerful effect on student learning. So I have a couple of questions. Sure. Um, one is, is tied to kind of planning in the midst of the school year, right? At one time we had talked about um, kind of funding a strike team, so to speak, of, of teachers who could go in and allow an entire team a day for planning. Are we doing that now already? Okay, we so are. that's been implemented already? Yeah. Good. Good. Yeah. Yes, the extended, the extended planning initiative is in full use. Awesome. So then the second question, or comment rather, really is, is more towards resources and, um, you know, uh, Tammy looked over at me when I said this because she probably knows where I'm going but you know we need to know what y what y'all need um, now is the time to make the ask it's budget season um, you know we can dream up what you might want but we need to know what you need uh, in terms of budgeting so that we can accommodate that uh, because as you know Tammy will tell you <laughs> We have tough choices to make in terms of how and where we spend our money. So we need to have full knowledge 
of what the needs are. And so if you have needs, let, let us know. We really appreciate that. Um, I, I can't tell you the, the effective, the, the extended planning that um, you helped make happen this past year, overwhelmingly our teachers have been so appreciative of that just to have the time I think you probably heard that loud and clear last year well that, that came out of that this exact conversation that mm -hmm. that idea came out of you know what do we need what do you right. all need and so I mean we we now have something in place that's working sounds like just tremendously um, but as much as we like to think we know everything we don't well I also want to caution the idea of over teaching I don't think we'd ever say at Skaggs or Andrews we were over teaching but as the mother of a child who was under taught at one of these schools we need to be careful because there are bright kids everywhere who really need to be pushed and please let's not ever say we're over teaching just because of the school they happen to go to yeah I, I think probably I'm not sure where that part of that comment came from 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 that particular teacher but um, as always, we have, we have four questions that really drive our planning process, and two of those, or one of those, two of those questions are: um, What do we do if our students really are understanding the material and need to need more, need ex an extension, or need to be enriched? And then, what do we do if our students aren't responding to that? So that's definitely a part of the planning process. So, so Dr. Taylor, um, this is in place right now. Yes, ma'am. We're you know driving the car and putting gas in it while we're going down the road. Um, so do you have any indicators at this point in time to know if we're having success with this? That's a really great question and we've talked about that quite often. We talk about it, uh, we talk about it often. What I have now mostly on this support um, is qualitative data. It's just the, cons the continuous contact we have with our principals, our leadership on that campus the teacher teams, um, my team, I'm sure Lisa can probably speak for her team as well, the constant communication that she has with them as well, um, of the true change in practice and conversation that's occurring on the campus. So it, it, like many things that that um, is a shift in thinking and kind of a, a change, it, it's gonna, it will take some time. Um, we've just began this journey in October to really dig deep with this training piece and to provide the continued support. And depending on what their campus improvement plans um, are all about, um, our support looks differently on, on each campus. Some campuses were there every single week and others it's every other week. But along with that, we were also there to provide some professional learning in between and along the way as they're ready. So ultimately, I would pr uh, presume that the results, the measurable ones, the quantitative ones, will be later this spring. When we'll we see. Have um, later this spring into next year. Um, it, it's difficult for me to say right now at this time that we'll see a huge impact in the spring. We, we all hope for that. That's always our, the focus of our work, always. But um, this is not something we're abandoning this year. This will be a continued focus for us beyond this year, the next few years, until we really feel like uh, we've touched every teacher and they're, um, like, again, we've operationalized that planning process and, and uh, feel good about that. So when you operationalize the planning process at the focus schools, you're able to scale that up into other schools? We already have. Um, begun that work that's a great question we we tried to get it out in front of our campus leaders as quickly as we could um, our specialists that support those campuses again I'm speaking for elementary right now these years might look a little bit differently um, but it's similar very similar and um, our team leaders on the campuses um, early on so they could understand what that was all about um, so yeah we've we've kind of hit the ground running with it we feel really good about the progress. I've got some folks from my department here tonight. I know that they were just here to, to support me, but um, they've really done a phenomenal job. We've looked at the, the best and the most current research um, to, to put this together and provide support for the teams in a way that's non-threatening, but at the same time um, provides them with some structure. So um, it's, it, it's working. Any other questions? Thank you very much. You Thank you. All right, we have another informational report this evening. Uh, the board.
communication plan. Assistant Superintendent for Government, Community and Planning Initiatives, Carla Oliver, will introduce the board communication plan. Thank you, President Bender. Um, I'm so pleased to bring this draft plan to the board for review this evening. Um, remember, it says draft, so this is an opportunity for you to see it and to kind of uh, think through if it reflects what you are hoping for in a plan. Um, I would like to express appreciation to our department staff whose voice you will hear throughout the plan, um, and I'm very proud of their, um, their input. So deep appreciation to our team. And presenting this evening um, is Leslie Range Stanton, our Executive Director for Communications. Thank you, Leslie. Thank you, Carla. Good evening, President Bender, trustees, superintendent loan finalist, <laughs> sponsor. Um, on behalf of my colleagues that Carla just mentioned, I am happy to share the content of this plan um, prepared for the school, for the school board. Um, as you know, last year we worked with a third party PR firm who compiled information and research regarding Plano ISD's communications practices. Um, and this plan takes that into consideration along with uh, information gathered by our team, um, several of whom are here tonight or back in the media room there. So I wanna make sure that, um, as Carla mentioned, they are recognized for their hard work and, and just brainstorming. It really was about brainstorming. I thank them uh, for that. We're gonna start with talking about the um, purpose of this plan. Um, the plan is intended to serve as a framework for communicating with stakeholders to support the district strategic plan and help advance district goals and priorities. With this plan, we also seek to establish methodologies for promoting community engagement. Um, we believe that in order to effectively communicate um, Plano ISD's strategic objectives and goals to our various audiences, um, it requires sustained, proactive outreach and dialogue. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about the plan objectives. Um, I'm gonna go through these really quickly. Uh, this is one slide that I couldn't summarize because I wanted to state all of these objectives. Implement a positive, proactive communications plan that complements the district strategic objectives. Promote Plano ISD as a highly respected public school system recognized for student excellence, exceptional teachers, and a variety of rich academic and elective offerings build and strengthen stakeholder relationships, position Plano ISD as being on the leading edge of public education with a reputation for its innovative and knowledgeable school board and leadership team, provide direction and cons consistency to ensure that all board members use clear and consistent messaging to communicate the mission, vision, programs, and objectives of Plano ISD. And then ultimately we wanna produce um, measurable uh, elements of success. So um, what and how we communicate will always be informed by the district's strategic plan. Therefore, as we look forward to an upcoming strategic planning process, um, elements of this plan could very well change. Um, but I did want to state currently what our uh, vision, uh, mission, vision, and goals are. So we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, promoting the district vision. And I pulled this information straight from policy, exhibit BBD states that the board of trustees should promote the district's vision in these following ways. I'm not gonna list all of those ways, but I did wanna just highlight the first few words because I think that this definitely gives um, some really great actions to keep in mind as you communicate with um, constituents. So we've got demonstrate commitment, ensure effective two-way communication, build partnerships, support children, lead in recognizing achievements, promote school board service, and provide input feedback to the legislature. And in working with you guys uh, so closely, I can see clearly how we're already doing that, a lot of that. Communications with the media, that's listed here. It goes across a couple of slides. It's one page in, in the actual plan, but that can come straight from your board protocol. Next, we'll talk about how um, we make our connections. We wanna start with identifying who our audiences are. Knowing the specific interests and needs of our various audiences allows us to develop effective communication strategies using relevant and appropriate channels. 
those audiences are listed here. Um, these are the ones that we came up with, but you know, we might be missing somebody, so we can always add to this, but we want to specifically look at our parents, staff, students, fellow school board members, government agencies, policymakers, businesses, residents who are not necessarily parents, prospective residents, volunteers, donors, property owners, nonprofit organizations and civic groups, higher education entities, realtors, and media. My favorite. Um, so that was our audiences. Yes. Does Chamber of Commerce fit into the nonprofit civic? I would put them in the civic organizations, okay. um, but if you feel they, they're standalone, we can always list them separately. Well, we've got realtor yeah. groups. So yeah, okay. yeah. So realtors is a, it's kind of a special category because they are kind of a, a connection to those um, future residents. So keeping them informed, and we've talked about special ways to keep them informed um, when we talk about some of the things that we might do as an emerging, um, as a recommendation for some of the things we do in the future. Um, but we've talked about, you know, to whom we are connecting, and now I want to look at, you know, how, how we're connecting with these groups. This particular slide lists our various communications tools from the website to our mobile app that we are currently beta testing. I hope everybody's trying it out. To various other collaterals like the annual report and e-news. Um, but I'd also like to note that this slide contains our special events and programs. Um, and with these, you guys are very much involved. Our board um, is very involved with some of these events. And um, through these programs like Key Communicators and RSVP, our staff appreciation events like Teacher of the Year, we are reaching a very specific audience in ways that are especially meaningful to them. So reaching out to specific audiences in ways that um, they can relate to is, is really important when we think about what we want to do going forward. So with the recommendation, um, this is really where that research from our external resource and our staff comes into play. Um, all the brainstorming kind of went into this and right before we started, I had to uh, brush up with Brittany and Jonathan and say, okay now, what do we mean when we said this? Because <laughs> we <laughs> talked about this a little while ago. Um, but here are some of the major recommendations that came out of it. Um, arrange for new trustees to meet with the communications department regarding common practices and policies. Refresh existing products to best showcase the district to newcomers, community members, and other constituents. Some of those things that we would update would include our road show that some of you have used um, frequently and, and others may not even know about, um, as well as our district overview video. We want to implement surveys when we're doing that in, in ways already that provide feedback on various topics. We could use the uh, calendar survey as an example, the website survey. We have a mobile app survey going right now. Um, review our current communication strategies and brainstorm new methods to engage with our audiences. That's ongoing, something that we're working on. Research new print media options to reach a broader audience on a regular basis, and that's kind of what we referenced. Um, for example, we might want to package our news or package our e-news that specifically targets um, realtors or um, organizations, chambers of commerce is another one of those groups. Um, explore the use of additional social, social media platforms such as Instagram, Instagram we're really looking into right now, to further reach and engage stakeholders. No Snapchat? Not, no, not Snapchat. But if I want to stay in touch with my son, I have to be on Snapchat. <laughs> Um, plan and produce uh, um, a state of the schools event that we've uh, talked with President Bender about off and on. Um, more effectively engage with eNews and District Digest subscribers by tracking reader interest to help guide content and effectiveness. Um, what's really neat about our new website is that we've got some tracking available so we can actually see how, how, much, how many visitors we get to these individual pages. So that's pretty neat. And um, we have a, an e-news survey going right now, so if you haven't noticed that, it, it, will, it will have been in your last two or three e-newses that you can survey and let us know what you like about it, what you want to change about it, what you want to see more of. Um, and I think you guys would be interested in knowing that uh, people are very interested in knowing what happens at these meetings, and they want to see more of that in the e-news. We also want to work with local media affiliates to increase positive media coverage. We, we 
get plenty of media coverage, um, and most of it is positive. Uh, if you watch this morning, early, early at 6.25 a.m., you might have seen our culinary arts program featured on WFAA, and if not, we'll capture and post it on the website so you can see it. But we want to do that by making individual pitches, such as that program, and doing more press releases. Um, explore new outlets to share Plano ISD messaging and stories with the local community. That might be a community magazine, something that reports about the district that might go out more often than the annual report, which is once a year. And then we also have talked about engaging businesses and sponsors by providing them video assets or other marketing collaterals to help them highlight their support of Plano ISD. Um, we have a little bit of an example of that with um, Park Place Lexus. If you've been in their showroom, you might have seen a Plano ISD video featuring Teacher of the Year or grants to educators. So that's been successful and we want to duplicate that. Um, and then engage our key communicators more effectively. So we want to do that throughout the year beyond just their quarterly meetings. Um, and we've done that by doing some special in, um, edition e-news just for them. Um, we've invited them to participate in surveys. They're uh, maybe our biggest group of beta testers for the mobile app hopefully. Um, so th those are just some of the recommendations that we've talked about. And then key messaging, this is this goes back to what we said about having you know everybody on the same page and being able to kind of sing from the same songbook. I use that just for Kathy Cuttis, she'd appreciate that. Um, <laughs> so we start by taking a little snapshot of Plano ISD then and now. And the purpose of this slide is really um, to just show that Plano ISD in the mid-90s was fast growing. Some of the changes that we've been through since that time. Fast forward to today, we've gone from 46 schools to 74, um, 38,000 students to 54,000. And the important part, the, the, the message is that while the community and student demographics have changed, several indicators of student success have remained consistent or improved. Um, an example that's given there is that in 1999, the district's graduation rate was 87.8 compared to 97.2 today. So the point of sharing this snapshot is to indicate that through growth and change, Plano ISD remains focused on the progress and achievement of students. So as you guys mentioned earlier, it's about the students. Um, I think that leads well into the next section. We're talking about some very specific targeted messages, which you can't really see on the slide, but I'll just summarize those. Um, these topics are presented based on the current district strategic plan and, and the priorities that we talked about earlier this school year. So uh, most closely tied to the mission statement, uh, this first set of targeted, uh, this first message with all the supporting key messages, it is um, talking about student excellence. So. This really supports our mission statement to provide an excellent education for each student. This next message really talks about closing achievement gaps, something that we talked about earlier this year as being a priority for the district, one of the um, initiatives outlined earlier this year. There are lots of supporting uh, data and, and messaging for that. Um, this one basically says Plano ISD is an excellent place to work and is thus able to attract the best teachers. So that's a message that we would like to share over and over again, and, and these are all the ways that we can support that message. Um, this next one, um, and I know our board will really appreciate this, but Plano ISD is fiscally responsible and works very hard to be good stewards of taxpayer dollars. Um, and these are several of the efforts, um, key data and supported, supporting messages that support that idea. And our final message focuses on how in partnership with our community, um, who, who strongly supported the last bond initiative, as we know, Plano ISD is able to remain ahead of the curve with regard to technology, facilities, and safety, um, which is a really important part of the conversation that's going on now, especially safety. Um, and we're gonna finish up with, this is our typical boilerplate on every press release that goes out for Plano ISD. This information is there. Um, if we don't know anything else about Plano ISD, we know this. <laughs> That's provided on this slide. And to uh, sum it up, we, we want to be able to evaluate our plan. So this is, as Carla said, it's a draft. It's also a, a living document that's going to change based on what's happening. Our key messages can change on a daily basis. Um, but we want
want to evaluate it by using surveys, surveying constituents, monitoring and um, reporting on media coverage, placement and sentiment. Um, we, we look at sentiment every single day. Gwendolyn in our office logs onto the software and goes through and anything that stands out, she'll send it to me. But a lot of things are marked as neutral. So she's either marking it as positive, negative, or neutral. Um, and so a lot of times we can change uh, neutral to positive. Um, not often does negative get changed to anything else, but um, that's a cycle that's really interesting to watch. So if you guys ever want to get into that data, I'll be happy to share it with you. Um, the social media use and interactions, um, the volume of, uh, I guess the volume of social media that we see every day, it tells you that social media is an area that we really need to be a little more engaged in because, you know, there's there are things happening in social media every day that helps us do our job when we know what's you know what's going on out there, and then we want to track engagement via the website and the mobile app. So we talked about that a little bit. The new products that we have that we've worked with in conjunction with the technology department will really help us with that last step. Can I? Draw. Can we go back to recommendations for a minute? Yeah. Because I have some. I made some notes okay. about some is some feedback and just some thoughts that I have for your. Uh, it's a little bit of specificity mm -hmm. for some of the items, so I just want you to know kind of what's on my mind. Okay. Okay. In no particular order. So, as as you work together, if you're going if we're going to continue to do a theme each year of some fault. You know, unfolding your future or whatever it is or if we're going to stick with the same theme each year if we could as a board get from you what the key messages are that you want us to hit on exactly in the year so um, if it's the same ones every year let's just make maybe uh, at the beginning of the school year uh, an event or an occurrence where okay board these are the things we want these are the three things we want you to focus on in everything that you talk about over this course of these, this year. Because you're going to be playing out those same things in your messaging. So just tell us what those, reinforce it with us. If we have a, a toolkit that um, has like the annual report, I mean you have great graphics and you guys work so hard on that. Give, and you may already have, give us a deck of of some slides mm -hmm. so that again when we're out in the community we're hitting on the messages we're all using the same toolkit we can edit it but we have a starting point um, I mean I know I can ask you to do that at any time but I mm -hmm. hate to ask you to do it because mm -hmm. you're extremely busy but if we get one at the beginning of the year then all of us can run with it yeah. and always do it like two days before yeah and I don't want to do that to you but we do have we what, do what we call the road show so I think that's yeah. what we're talking about it's yeah. just that we need to share yeah. it a little more broadly so in terms of the the new methods to engage our audiences I, I can't wait to hear what you come up with that is creative and new okay. I want something different that somebody else isn't doing I want it to be interesting um, indifferent okay not the same thing uh, on the social media you brought that up I agree with you and you know even you know the app next door it can be mm. so you know <laughs> difficult at times uh, I think the city's doing a neat job of using it to inform mm -hmm. some facts you know hey we have this thing coming up you may want to know about it and you know so I think that to add to Instagram, I know you've t probably talked about it, but for considerations. Yeah. And in the budgeting process, I don't know how the rest of the board feels about this, but I think we need staffing, new staffing, to handle the social media component of growth. You guys are just stretched with all of the events that you're doing and mm -hmm. all that you're doing. So I just throw that out there. Thank you. That's in consideration. For in, in order to grow in that area with the existing staff something else is going to give yeah. and I don't know that we have the capacity to give up something else and so I just throw that out there um, with regard to getting more people oh, with regard to e-news I don't know if there's a way that we can instead of making people opt into that make them opt out 
-hmm. so we that we can we get do we, we do we did mm -hmm. for some no, reason I don't mean to contradict you but um, when you go through the enrollment process mm -hmm. you're <coughs> But you're automatically subscribed. Okay. Okay. I, I just want to make sure that because some of our safety messages, I was getting feedback that people are saying, oh, I haven't seen that. And I'm like, how can you not see that? So, Dan? Yeah. In the, in the enrollment process uh, in the beginning of the year, uh, your email address is harvested. Uh, and it is uh, subscribed to for uh, within eNews. Um, we also take in your uh, data because I hear also from the other end too that uh, because the emergency notifications and everything else that come out and then mm -hmm. the notifications of we got a choir event and how do I opt out of those yeah. components too but we do work with our parents in in the process for opting out also okay great um, so we've talked about this before like some kind of town hall thing that is digital and in person maybe on an interesting topic for a group of people like the realtors mm -hmm. because I know we don't have great success when you know we just make it for everybody nobody shows up maybe an interested group that's interested in that very specific thing you know maybe that's where we can try uh, a new tool and once you figure out like what you want to do with all of this stuff you know as you come up with your plan if it's possible to give us a calendar to say hey this is kind of what we're gonna do this year we're gonna do this new thing and this this new thing in October and this new thing in November so we can kind of see the communication just highlights so we know what to expect and that would be awesome okay I have a couple of comments first I want to say this is beautiful I love the format I'm not near my microphone anymore, <laughs> um, but I, I really enjoyed reading it, and um, I thought y'all always do such a beautiful job. I had a couple of comments related to, I know that one of our great communication outlets is the PTA, so I just don't want to forget that, and um, you know, I contributed to their newsletter every month as liaison, so you said that some people are looking for what we do in our meetings. We, pro we provide that to PTA every month. But um, the other things are specifics, and you kind of went through some specifics, and I'm gonna talk about on the uh, Texas Public School Funding, the key data and supporting messages. I feel like to add a couple of bullet points, I know that seems like onerous work, but um, I would like to make sure that we highlight the, num the dollars that we spend on instruction and instruction related, and then maybe, balance that with what is our administrative cost per student some of those peer review numbers that Randy brought to us last month and then another um, question that I get frequently and, and it has to do with the um, misunderstanding of debt and the difference between maintenance and operations and INS and um, I feel like sometimes we get uh, viewed negatively in regard to our debt so I think a couple of bullet points there that would send the message on how responsible we are and you know the fiduciary responsibility that we do take very seriously with regard to our taxpayers uh, so those are just my comments and their okay. details sorry That's okay. so um, a couple things one is um, when we hired our consultant to bring us a plan I thought this was what we were getting so I appreciate y'all mm -hmm. picking up the ball that they dropped and completing their work um, so the last slide of evaluation and measurement, I like this. I think this is great that, that there are, will be some um, methods to determine how effective we are. So the question I have for y'all is how you all will be able to monitor that. How will we know? Are we going to, are you going to report kind of routinely to us? Or are you going to just say, hey, we're doing a poor job here. We need to, you know, pick this up. What's the plan there? Yeah. Actually, I would look to the board for some feedback and to um, the loan finalist for some uh, information <laughs> about that too, about what, what is palatable to everyone and how frequently you would like to hear. But some of the tools that we have to measure, for instance, earned media, we have a way of getting that kind of a report and is that something you want to see regularly or would you like for us to package that into a presentation that we give you all um, that includes multiple measures at one time. 
we yeah. would do that at your pleasure. I would but think that it's that very might be... interesting for us, just like I mentioned in the board updates, which Leslie participates in as well. We would tell you what the top posts are and right. what's garnered the most attention. We could just expand that notion of, of all those different measures. I, I would think there's kind of two components to it in my mind at mm -hmm. least, which is, you know, some of those things that you get, you can track regularly. Right. Um, you know, the board update might be a good place for that. Um, but if there are specific shortfallings where, right. you know, we need to really, we as a group up here need to focus on doing something. I mean, that, that I think I would ask that y'all take it upon yourself to, to tell us that, um, you know, what, where those shortfallings are so that we can address them. Well, and I, I certainly do feel like this is the board's plan, but there's, there's, um, it's obvious that there's some crosswalk over to what would be general communication initiatives. Mm -hmm. So that's not lost on us as well. So you'll you'll be our partners in many ways for that, which you already are. So, um, well, and Leslie, I didn't mean to speak over you. Was there something you might want to add to that? No. Okay. <laughs> I'd, I'd enjoy at the end of the year mm -hmm. reflecting back okay. and saying, you know, if we start, if we implement, you know, upcoming school year, kind of lay out a plan and so forth, say, all right, this is what we're going to do this calendar year. And then at the end of the year, we look back and go, how'd it go? And you give us your feedback and we give you our feedback based on data, based on anecdotal information, and then adjust for the year ahead. May I ask a clarifying question? When you yeah. say end of year, did you mean calendar year or school academic year? year? Okay. School year. Academic year. So sometime, you know, during the summer, kind of you bet. how to go. Okay. Maybe at a board retreat. Okay. 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 And, you know, I would add, uh, you asked about the metrics and uh, measurements. Uh, I think having some kind of a dashboard mm -hmm. uh, with here are our targets, here is where we are, and so on, um, that, that would probably be the easiest to digest. The other part is, as far as our communication or using us as communicators, uh, I, I agree, as Ms. said, uh, you know, three points, maybe four, maybe five points, not more than that, but for each one of them, uh, support a uh, few support bullets uh, so you know when we make a statement such as we are fiscally conservative what are the support bullets mm -hmm. and a few anecdotes because stories always uh, get get attention that would help us Arlen and Leslie I have some questions about the boilerplate where it's like describing a person by their height and weight it's accurate but it's not really interesting and so when I look at the boilerplate I don't really see who Plano is and I've been reflecting on that a lot I just came back from my second leadership TASB class and when I go next time I get to present the seven minutes of what Plano ISD is and so if I were to present this they still wouldn't know and I think about uh, when we were doing some of the original comments with the the consultants where Plano ISD was almost described like joining the Marines we are going to work you hard and every child regardless of where they fall in our spectrum kind of reflect that I got through Plano ISD I'm good and I'm tough and I'm well prepared and that may be too edgy to use in this but something to talk about I think back on slide 15 it talks about a shared vision of excellence and even highlighting some of those metrics our national merit our CTE our fine arts because I'm thinking this border plate if I want to go to you know college admissions counselor at Harvard and I have a, just a paragraph to share with them I want to share why our kids are better, different, stronger, better prepared, you know, great thinkers, those sorts of things. And I, I don't really get that from this somewhat utilitarian description of who we are. Mm -hmm. So I think you're looking for the, what everybody calls the elevator speech. Pretty much. Yeah. I think that would be a lot more helpful yeah. um, in terms of really, I mean, the boilerplate's the one thing that almost everyone sees that you sign off on all your, your press releases. How can we keep hitting a message that we really care about there? Okay. Okay, thank you for, as David said, picking up the ball and running with it. And I look forward to seeing what plans you come up with from all of your ideas. Thank, thank you, you very so much. much. And thanks to Leslie, but appreciate presenting to you tonight. Okay. All right, now we will turn our attention to policies. At most of our regular meetings, we have policies on the agenda <coughs> for the board's consideration. And these policies have undergone prior review by the district's attorney and by each board member. I invite Carla Oliver to introduce the policies we have on the agenda this evening. Thank you, President Bender. Um, 
I'll take our first policy up for consideration. It's actually update 109, and the administration recommends that you actually pull that from the agenda tonight and uh, present that at a sub subsequent meeting. Okay. Very good. So update 109 is pulled. No consideration this evening. Correct. Okay. Item B, CW local regarding naming facilities, second reading. Um, as you know, this policy was developed to outline district guidelines and practices in regard to the naming of facilities, and that's also being broken down from what facilities do we actually mean. Um, some of that would fall into process versus policy, but this is the board setting, setting your standard for what you want in that process for naming of facilities, so I appreciate your consideration. Okay, do I have a motion from the board to adopt policy CW local on second reading? I move that we adopt policy CW local on second reading. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor, please raise your hand. Motion passes unanimously. All right, item C is FFAC local regarding wellness and health services, medical treatment. Thank you, President Bender. This again is provided uh, for your adoption under second reading tonight. FFAC was updated to reflect current guidelines and practices. So this is one of the housekeeping. Okay. Do I have a motion to adopt on second reading? I move that we adopt FFAC local on second reading. Any dis uh, do I have a second? Second. Do I have any discussion? All in favor, please raise your hand. Motion passes unanimously. Next policy is EIC local related to academic achievement class ranking. This is first reading. Yes, thank you. This policy also has been revised to align with our current district practices. All right, do I have a motion to approve on first reading? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor, please raise your hand. Motion passes unanimously. Okay, item E is EI, which is Exhibit G on Academic Achievement Second Reading Review Only. Yes, this exhibit um, is actually to show you a letter to parents regarding attendance and grading for middle school students earning high school credit and health one. Okay. So this is for your review so that you can acknowledge having seen. Do I have a motion to review on second reading? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor, please raise your hand. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you so much for your consideration. Okay, thank you, Carla. Okay, now we have uh, item X on our agenda. This is the conclusion of public comment session related to non-agenda topics. So I've, I've uh, previously read the description around the parameters of this part of the meeting. I will now convene the 15-minute public comment session on non-agenda topics. Each speaker will have up to three minutes. Uh, Ms. Oliver, before you call the speakers, uh, Ms. Humphrey will serve, she's our secretary, she will serve as timekeeper. She, each speaker will have three minutes. At the two-minute mark, which means when there is one minute remaining, Ms. Humphrey will give a signal. You want to show us what the signal will be? I will be. say one minute, but that doesn't mean stop talking. That just means you have one minute left to speak. Okay, so keep that in mind when you hear that one minute sign. Wrap, wrap up your comments. If you get to three minutes, um, then I will ask you to please conclude immediately. All right, Ms. Oliver. <coughs> Thank you. Our first speaker will be Melanie Davis. Uh, please come on up to the... Uh, Lectern here. I'm sorry, but we yeah, cannot. Uh, what? Okay, ask me about about rules. About the rules that you signed. Okay, go ahead. It's really one. I'm it's really one, and it, and it should be the person who signed the card yeah. as but, the designated speaker, but, but I'll defer to you. Here's, here's what you can do. <laughs> Honey, I'm sorry. 
we want to know what you have to say, so we will read every one because our secretary here will give a copy to each one of us, okay? So, the, the, so whoever addressed, whoever signed the speaker card, can you kind of summarize what you want to summarize? And we will read every one of your letters. I just can't, unfortunately, yeah, it's we just, together. Hey, do the best you can. Okay, I don't know what the rest of y'all are doing, but I'm going to hang out in the in the lobby after this meeting. Yeah. If you so here's what, here's what we can do. Yeah. Say your piece. All right. Then we'll hear the other speakers. I'll adjourn the meeting. Okay. And if you girls want to come talk to us, we'll wait. Okay. Is that okay? All right. So please, please go ahead. Okay. Um. I'm reading it on behalf of the, the girls put these, this is their words. Okay. Um, dear honorable members of the Plano School Board, um, we represent Girl Scout Troop 7923 from the Han Elementary fourth grade class. We are working on our take action project to improve our community. Our troop would like to reduce food waste in our school. Our PTA Earth Club tracked our school's food waste and it was approximately 130 to 150 pounds per day in our cafeteria. We would like to reduce food waste by collecting food served in the cafeteria that has not had its packaging opened, whole unco uncut produce, or unpeeled fruit. This food could be donated to local nonprofit food banks or provided to students who may not have enough to eat at home. This will also help Pablo, our custodian, not have to carry out so much trash and improves our environment. We hope that you'll help us in reviewing the Plano School District policy and consider a change that will allow our school to collect and distribute that food so we can help those around us and make our community better. We appreciate you listening to this request to help um, with your review. We have a copy of Texas Senate Bill 725. This bill was signed by the governor and passed on June 9th, 2017, and was effective immediately. Senate Bill 725 now allows schools across Texas to collect and donate some food that may have been wasted before. However, the, school, the Plano School District policy currently prevents this. We hope you'll consider a change to our district's policy to help our students and community. Our school's PTA has offered to help, and our school could even be a test site to see if a new food waste reduction program could work. Thank you. Thank you very much. And just, just we'll, this will be just a couple of minutes. Just wait, and we'll visit with you afterwards, okay? Thank you. Next speaker, Carla. Kevin Bai. Hello. Um, does my time start now? Yes, Go she'll ahead. start as soon as you begin speaking. Okay. So um, my name is Kevin Bai, and as many of you may recall, I was here two months ago to speak uh, about me and Gunjan Batrai's um, uh, uh, proposition to remove class rank in Plano ISD, with the exception of the 10%, top 10%, in order to comply with Texas law and for 6% for UT automatic admission. And I'd like to follow up on that issue by addressing some of the concerns that parents and students have brought up about removing class rank. Now, the first concern is that it would somehow only, removing class rank would somehow only benefit um, the so-called lower achieving or lower rank students. And I don't believe this is true because First of all, the most stressed students from class rank are actually the highest rank, the higher achieving students, the ones who are disappointed at getting a 96 on a test or disappointed for being ranked 1.1% in one of the top high schools in the nation. And secondly, we have to remember that the majority of kids in Plano West or Plano ISD high schools are gifted kids. And the difference between these kids are so minuscule that to say that removing class rank would only benefit these lower ranking kids is simply not true. And secondly, some uh, parents have been concerned that if we do not rank our students, that it would somehow be dis, uh, disadvantageous in our uh, college application and admission process. However, as the College Board states, according to a study by the NACAC, 
more than half of all high schools in the United States no longer rank their students. Which means that many colleges now are beginning to look at class rank as a more obsolete One factor. One and minute. Because that class rank is so flawed, as we said last time, it drives kids to take six or seven AP classes, which is completely unnecessary. And CBE, uh, credit by exam, very fundamental classes such as Algebra 2. Removing class rank is a change that we need for a better future for our children. And I encourage the board to act on this issue by the end of the school year. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Our next speaker is Gunjan Batrai. As soon as you begin speaking, you may start. Hi, everyone. My name is Gunjan. Um, I'm a senior at Plano West. My voice is a bit raspy, so it might be a bit hard to understand me. I'm still recovering from sickness. But what I want to talk about today are two issues. First, regarding class ranking. So I think uh, my colleague Kevin Bai already talked about most of it. I want to note that our petition has now reached 388 signatures, making it one of the most popular in Plano IC history. So I strongly advocate the fact that we need, really need to consider this and try to reform the class ranking system. In many ways, Plano ISD's education system has largely become a zero-sum game in which people are willing to compete and do anything they can, choose specific classes, cheat, or practically anything in which they can try getting the upper end against their peers. We need to foster a collaborative learning environment, and by removing the class rank system, that's our best option in order to do so. So I ask the board to ensure that we try to create necessary reform before the end of the school year. But the thing I want to talk about the most is something new regarding the school punishment system. So what we've noticed, specifically among high school seniors and juniors, is that in many cases, Plano IC school punishment system isn't exactly doing what it needs to do to try and reform students to become better people. Plano IC, for the most part, uses what's called zero tolerance, which basically means that we're going to try putting the strictest possible punishment toward the students so that they can hopefully be deterred from doing something, whether it be like cheating or drug possession or weapons or regardless. But the problem with this approach is because the fact we only focus on punishment and not necessarily upon rehabilitation, many students effectively don't really feel a need to change. They feel like society or like the administration has gone against them and they feel like they've been punished too hard. And in many cases, the fact that we've made punishment such a big deal effectively means that many of these students who commit mistakes are ostracized by their own peers for the mistake. And effectively, they see no incentive for themselves to change. And as a result, we see people continue to make these same mistakes over and over again, effectively ensuring that they'll be punished over and over again. And since Plano IC spends roughly around $5 million each year on school punishment, it's One important minute. that we try and create necessary reform to bring down this cost and to ensure that many students, once they're put into punishment, are effectively changed. Because Plano IC does do one thing great. The first time you get punished, it doesn't go in your record, which provides the best opportunity to change. But it's time we did more. So that's why I've created another proposal, which is to create a restorative justice system. In effect, rather than focusing on punishment for more minor crimes, we'd effectively have students who have been punished, as well as students who are hurt by these students' actions, go together with a circle and a mediator, effectively ensuring that the student who made a mistake can understand why their actions were wrong and so that they can reform themselves. But most importantly, we can ensure that communities continue to keep the student with themselves and that they don't feel ostracized. And as a result, when they come out of the system, they'll feel that they've been completely reformed. And in three California districts where this was investigated, what we noticed is the suspension rates dropped by around 50 to 80 percent. And I did some calculations. And if we implemented the system, we could have 200,000 extra dollars Time to invest on social work services. Thank you very much. Thank you. Our next speaker is Jennifer Fink. Hi, good evening. I'm Jennifer Fink, and thank you for allowing me to speak. On behalf of some of the parents here tonight, but of course the greater community in, in uh, Plano ISD, our students, our teachers, and um, of course everyone in our community, um, I'm speaking on behalf, of, on behalf of the issue of security in our schools. Children must be at school feeling protected and can focus on learning, and teachers must be focused on our children. That is what allows Plano 
to be to provide the highest level of education as we've talked about tonight I listened to the security update at the last board meeting but we must have good procedures in place when some incidents occurs but I encourage you to look again we don't have good security in place to prevent future incidences we need to intensify what we're doing on our campuses attention must be shown to all campuses including Shepton High School and other <coughs> classes with portable classrooms if Plano provides itself on being an exemplary district we must do the same with our security there is so much to be done and we must take action now I heard at the last board meeting about the potential updates to three high schools that is not enough it's not enough to have a single security guard in our schools we need extra security and well-trained security we must increase the number of security um, officers and potentially add metal detectors why don't all of our classrooms have protection the elementary classrooms are wide open have no doors and do not allow for security we don't have windows in our classrooms that open which also don't allow for access to the outside we need immediate action and our school and curriculum must be addressing mental health and awareness I'm aware that that is being addressed but as I speak to principals that is not a full curriculum that is in all schools today we need to have more community communication uh, recent communication came out from some principals to make sure you urge them to say something when they hear something but we must ensure that we follow up when teachers or counselors feel that a, tr a child is in trouble or believe there is a possible threat one we, minute we can prevent these events from happening we need to have zero tolerance in our schools for weapons including guns and knives that are brought to school why are there kids in our school that have been been that have been caught for bringing a knife to school that in fact has happened we must have zero tolerance for bullying fighting and social media posts this is not happening we've had seen we've seen plenty of examples in the news over the past few weeks unfortunately given what has happened in across America and I believe many schools are taking aggressive action and looking at this differently than we have or that we've unfortunately had to look at you can see there's examples of bulletproof shelters in Oklahoma there's examples of smoke I believe is what they called it through the hallways when an incident is occurring what are we doing to be more proactive and look at options differently unfortunately this is what we need to do um, I listened to the last board meeting and Plano ISD compared to time is up sorry thank you, for listening. <laughs> thank you very much what is it okay With no further business, the meeting of the Plano ISD Board of Trustees is adjourned at 9.05 p.m.